Hi, we're here at Box Days Bristol and I am joined by Matthew Ravel. Hello. Thank you very much for chatting to us today, Matthew. That's okay. And can you tell us a little bit about yourself? What do you do? Yeah, um, well, I work for a company called Couchbase where I'm a uh, director of developer advocacy for, for EMEA, um, which basically means I'm involved in spreading awareness of Couchbase, which is a, a NoSQL database, and trying to get it to a situation where people want to use it. And then when they actually use it and they're making either toy apps or real deployment software against it, that they, they have a good experience. Okay, so you're kind of part marketer, part hands-on technology teacher, basically. I guess so, yeah. There's, a, there's definitely awareness and adoption in there. So the big secret about developer relations is that it really is marketing. Um, and then there's an education part there as well. So you need that crossover between being able to write and understand code, but also being able to approach a market, I guess. And how pivotal do you, a role do you think developers play in open source, sorry, developer evangelists play in open source, kind of pushing these technologies forward? Because obviously the success of a good open source project is that people want to come on board, people want to help build. Yeah. Well, I mean, developer advocacy is, is what developers, it's what we do naturally. You know, if there's something that works for you, something that you've, you've that's excited you or just solved a pain point, then you go and tell people about it, whether it's informally or you go and do a talk, whatever it is. And so developer advocacy, developer relations, is just the formalization of that. Um, you know, for every, for every Elasticsearch, every Node.js, every whichever successful project out there, there are probably five or ten promising projects that never really gain traction. And if that's your pet project, that might be a bit annoying. But if you're funded by some VCs in Silicon Valley, then it's a little bit more than annoying, it becomes potentially fatal. It's panic. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So developer advocacy um, fills in those gaps. It, it, it uses the, the tools that developers spread things by anyway um, and just make sure that someone's doing that for a particular project. So I think, yes, in open source it's important, but I think generally in in things that are targeted at developers is important, whether it's an API, a library, or whatever, um, because traditional marketing doesn't work with developers. Right. Know, developers see through it, don't they? Yeah. Think... So it, it, when you when you're writing code, um, it either works or it doesn't. Now, before this, I was uh, playing around with something in Node, and uh, it's not always as black and white with no, because I'm trying to work out why it's not working, but, and it should be, but anyway, the point is it either works or it doesn't. And if you have someone who is really, really talented as a marketer, but they don't understand the depth of what it is that you're doing, that, you know, the, the sort of things that developers deal with every day are things that most people don't even consider, let alone know that they're a problem and how to solve them. So most marketers would, would look at what, um, something like, Pusher, which is an API for real-time web, or you know Twilio, which is an API for telecoms, would do, and they wouldn't have that visceral understanding of why this one's better than the other one, or why this one solves problems in a different way, and why that might be appropriate to different groups um, that a developer does. And so, yes, it is a form of marketing, but it's a marketing that's, that comes out of a deep understanding of, of the people that you're talking to and the products you're talking about. That's the thing, the bottom line as well, the people, if it's an open source project, they can take it, they can <clears> test <throat> it, they can see through your lies, or if you yeah, don't. absolutely, yeah. I mean, it's, it's not it's a even, traditional market. It's not even just about lies, it's about just pure misunderstanding. Or, yeah, so yes, if you can if you get the code or you've got the API, you can, you can try it out and you can, you know, in the NoSQL world, there's uh, a guy called Carl Kingsbury, um, known on the line as Aphia, who puts NoSQL database vendor claims to the test with a test suite he's written, and is very vocal and very well known now for, for doing that. And database vendors have had to be more careful about what they say because they know that he will put them to the test. And um, your role, what you do, you're a little bit meta, aren't you? You don't just act as a developer advocate. You kind of act as an advocate for developer advocates themselves. Uh, I know that you're heavily involved in organising DevRailCon. Yes, yeah. So I've been working, building developer communities probably for about nearly 10 years now, professionally. Um, and it wasn't something um, that even really had a name. You know, there was, I think people called advocate came around or community manager or community leader whatever that that was used and then the evangelism term came about but 
really, there hasn't been much sharing of knowledge between people who do this developer community thing. And um, yeah, last year I decided to put on a conference in London about it. And uh, we're doing the San Francisco edition on April 16th uh, this year, and then there'll be another one in London or somewhere in Europe later in, in this year. So yeah, for me, spreading that, that practical knowledge of how to do this job is, is, is really important. I actually was lucky enough to go to DevRelCon in yes, London. And I think what's really interesting is that the scope of the communities that people manage, it doesn't matter if your community is a couple of hundred or a couple of thousands, there's actually yeah. very similar challenges um, along the line, things like how to relate to people, mm. making your community open and accessible, kind of, it's almost anyone can kind of be a developer evangelist, even if you're a project of one, and you're looking yeah. to people get on board. Yeah. Um, well, uh, Lucas from the Duke project is, is really, you know, it's, it's him and he goes out and he does a great job of, of evangelizing Duke. Um, and then, you know, at DevRelCon we had someone from one of the big credit card companies who came down and said, well, I'm setting up a developer relations program inside my credit card company because we as a company don't relate well to developers and we want to recruit them and we want to have them feel good when they work here. So that's a slightly different tack, but certainly, yes, it, it, it I mean, from one to many thousands, it fundamentally comes down to, I think, two things. One is be a decent human being, and the second is know your stuff, because you can't, you can't fake it. Thank you very much for taking the time to chat to us today. Thank you. And we'll be linking to that if there's any evangelist thinking, me, me, I want to join your community. <laughs> yep, uh, DevRelCon, uh, or, uh, or at DevRel.net. Perfect. Thank you very much. Thanks.